So I'm Mary Ostrowski, and I am an uh, infectious disease clinician affiliated with the University of Toronto and St. Michael's Hospital. I spend 75% of my time doing um, research-related activities and about a quarter of my time uh, doing uh, infectious disease consultant work at um, St. Michael's Hospital. And my, my research focus is mainly on um, HIV and immunology. So since I'm an MD, I went through the, uh, the, the medical um, um, teaching curriculum. So I, I, got, I re received my MD in 1984 through the University of Western Ontario. And then I did um, specializations in a, in a number of fields. And those included uh, anatomical pathology, internal medicine, and um, infectious diseases. And when I finished my infectious diseases training, uh, I was really fascinated with um, doing research on uh, infectious diseases. And um, since I, I was doing infectious disease training in the um, late 80s, and that was really the height of the um, HIV AIDS epidemic, so I had decided that, that, that at the time, since we didn't have very good treatments available, that it would be important to try to uh, do research uh, in HIV. And so I had contacted Anthony Fauci at the National Institutes of Health to see if I could work uh, in his laboratory, and he agreed. And so I worked in his laboratory from 1994 to 1999 for five years. And then when I finished doing um, postgraduate training there, I was hired at University of Toronto to, um, uh, to work here to continue doing um, a, a clinician scientist type of work. So it was pretty easy to be drawn to um, the HIV field uh, because I had friends that were, were dying of AIDS um, while I was training. And uh, at the time, it was really quite um, a major epidemic. And there was very little known about uh, the infection and how it um, damaged the immune system and how to prevent the infection. So it was very easy to, uh, to want to try to do something about the epidemic at the time. So it was a very easy uh, career path to take at, at that time. So, so my program of research um, uh, deals with um, a number of questions. The first question is, is, is we're trying to figure out how the HIV virus damages the immune system of a person. And we, e even though we, um, we, <clears throat> we, we've known about HIV for at least 25 years, we still don't really understand how this virus is actually um, destroying the immune system. In addition, we know that when a person gets infected with this virus, their immune system can actually partially control the virus, but then somehow the virus is able to weaken the immune system and then allowing the virus to start um, growing uh, without uh, the control of the immune system. And we're trying to understand why that is. So why is it that HIV and other viruses like hepatitis C virus, why do those viruses, um, are, why are they able to escape from the effects of the immune system. And so we're trying to understand how the virus weakens the immune cells in the body to allow it to keep growing. And if we can figure out the mechanism of how the virus uh, weakens th these immune cells, if we can reverse that mechanism, then we can develop treatments to allow the um, immune system to actually control the virus and possibly um, get rid of it from the body. So uh, one of the projects that we're working on is that we found a number of years ago that um, we, we found a, a, a way that, that HIV seems to be weakening um, some of the immune cells in the body. There's one immune cell in the body called a CD8 killer cell. And this CD8 killer cell, its job is to, is to kill virus-infected cells. 
And so we wanted to understand um, why do, the, do these killer cells not um, get rid of HIV from, from the body? And what we found is that these cells are actually um, weakened or exhausted, and they don't seem to be able to do um, their job effectively at killing the HIV-infected cells. And we found that, that one of the reasons why these cells are exhausted is that they have upregulated a, molec a molecule that's called TIM3. And this molecule um, gets upregulated, it gets expressed on the surface of these cells, and when it get, does get expressed, it seems to um, make the cells unable to kill the HIV-infected targets. We found that if we can block the action of this molecule, these killer CD8 cells can start now killing their HIV-infected targets. So one area of interest that we're looking at is we're trying to figure out um, whether we can develop ways of blocking this TIM3 molecule on the CD8 cells, either with a drug that could maybe block the action of this molecule, or with an antibody that you could infuse into someone and it could uh, block the TIM3 molecule and allow the CD8s to, um, to, to kill the infected cells. So we're doing experiments now in monkey experiment, in, in the monkey model, where monkeys are infected with, um, uh, with, a, with the monkey counterpart of HIV called SIV, and we want to see whether if we, if we block this TIM3 molecule, can we, can we allow the monkey then to control the virus? Um, and then we were also developing human antibodies and hopefully, possibly drugs that can actually restore the function of these um, killer T cells to try to eradicate the infection. So the OHTN has been very important in helping me continue my research in Toronto and Ontario in general. Um, I was able to get a, uh, a career award through the OHTN that would allow me to uh, do research without having to do clinical work to, to actually make a living. The Canadian Institute of Health Research, the, the body that actually gives the medical research dollars, does not have very good funding mechanisms to allow uh, people like myself who are clinician scientists to um, uh, develop career support to continue to do research. So the OHT actually filled, up, filled that gap and has provided me funds to, for me to be able to do research without having to do other work to, to generate uh, an income. So I've, do, I've gotten um, career awards from the OHTN. As well, in the past, the OHTN used to give um, research dollars for actual projects, and they had given me money for a number of projects. In addition, the OHTN gives a lot of uh, training awards to um, young trainees that are interested in HIV research, and a lot of the, the uh, students that work in my lab, as well as postdocs, have received um, quite a lot of financial support from the OHTN. Actually, I think the OHTN has provided more financial support than any um, granting agency for my lab. So compared to other um, fields of research, I think HIV research still has um, available research dollars. We, we know that HIV is still a problem because there isn't a vaccine and we can't eradicate uh, the virus from the body. People need to be, go on lifelong treatment. There are still a lot of um, treatment side effects and as well, access to treatment is still pretty poor and many of the treatments are still expensive. So I think there still is a lot of interest in um, HIV research. And the areas that are now people should, should be thinking of going into, at least from a biologic, bio, biomedical point of view, is um, developing an HIV vaccine. We still don't know whether we're even capable of developing an HIV vaccine, but there have been a lot of um, sort of uh, new discoveries in immun immunology and in nanotechnology that could be uh, used for a new investigator to try to figure out a, a way, new ways of developing an HIV vaccine. As well, there have been a lot of advances in molecular biology and understanding um, just the way the cell works and how viruses work. So there's still a lot of uh, room for people to uh, work on um, cure type research to try to figure out ways to uh, get rid of the, the virus that's still in, in a person's body while they're on drugs. So there's, there's still definitely a lot of room for doing research. There's still uh, research dollars available.
So my hopes for the future is that uh, hopefully that we'll, we will some some of our discoveries are going to eventually go to the uh, to to actually be applied in patients. Um, so we we've just finished we're, we're just finishing one study that's looking at different types of treatment that can be used in um, early or acute HIV infection when a person first gets infected, and we're hoping that maybe maybe some of these treatments might help to uh, reduce the amount of virus in a person um, and possibly to allow them to eradicate it. The description of the Berlin patient has given us a lot of um, optimism that we may be able to develop new therapies to um, eradicate uh, HIV infection from a person to, to prevent lifelong treatment. In addition, I think it's very possible that we will have a vaccine within the next 10 years that actually will work. Um, given, given all the advances that, were, that have happened over the last couple of years in the basic biology of how the immune system can control the virus.